What's going on everybody? It's Chris here for Friendly Frenzy Games. Back today, hopping into some Escape Simulator for the first time in a long time. They just actually went through and released a new premium pay DLC escape room pack with four rooms in it. So I am here today to walk you through the very first one in that set called Magic Shop. Let's dig in. So the first puzzle that you're going to want to tackle in this one is the chest drawer or the desk drawer back here with the combination lock. So you can see when quickly zooming in here, we have Lipis or Lipis and kind of three colors here, three circular colors. And we need to come up with a four digit number for this combination. So really what you're going to need for this one here, there are just a couple of lollipops in front in this trolley. So let's just quickly have a quick look here. We need a blue stripe. We need a pink and um, a darker pink, basically, stripe pattern and a solid yellow. So we're going to go ahead and we're going to grab those. So here's our pink stripe one. Here's our blue stripe one and then our solid yellow. And you can see on all of these here as we kind of inspect them, there is one Aorus, four Kunas and um, 1279 Lippus. What you need to do is actually just use this conversion chart to come up with the total amount of Lippus. That's what the Lippus is on this combination lock here. So we know we need a total number of Lippus. Basically what we need to do with this one is we know here we have 1279 Lippus. So let's figure out what Kunis is in terms of Lippus since blue is our first number. What do we have here? So our conversion rate one Kunis is 100 Lippus. Obviously on the blue one here, we have two Kunis, so that's gonna be 200 Lippus. So for the blue one alone is 1479 Lippus. So we can go ahead, I'm just gonna put this in so we can kind of actively total as we go along here. So 1479 is our count for the blue one. Now our pink one here, we have two Auras and two Kunis. So we know the two Kunis is 200 Lippus, one Aorus is five Kunis, so basically 500 Lippus. Um, so let's just do, so we have two Aorus, so basically um, 10 Kunis there. So that is a thousand Lippus plus another 200 uh, Lippus just from converting the two Kunis to Lippus. So we're gonna have another 1200 here. So let's just again tack that on. Um, okay, so 1679 we're at right now, and then we have our solid yellow. So our solid yellow is one Aorus and four Kunis. Again, we know the Aorus is one, is, sorry, five Kunis. So basically we're adding 900 Lippus here. We're gonna have um, five Kunis plus four Kunis for your nine, and then we're gonna convert that obviously to Lippus. So we're gonna get another 900. So let's add 900 to here. Obviously with this, we're gonna be from 26 plus nine is 35 and our combination is 3579. And inside this, we get a chocolate bar. We're gonna save that for later. Let's hop into the next puzzle. So the next puzzle in this magic shop room that we're going to need to solve is for the glove of need just in this um, series of showcases over here. So we're gonna look at this combination lock here and we can see that there's a green, a blue, and a red with um, vase symbols basically as our combination here. And how you get the answer for this one here is just walking across and we're gonna want the eternal shadowverse. So you can see obviously it's a green vase or vase and what you're gonna need to do essentially is just make these match the shape and color and order of this combination lock. So obviously we're gonna start with the green here. So let's put this shape in. It's almost like a uh, it starts kind of wide and then tapers off to a skinnier base at the bottom. So it should be this one here. Now our second one we need is blue. What you need to do is actually break this. It's a shatter vase, so it's intended to break. You can see obviously that the second one that it gives us is our red. So we could put our red in, but again though, it is the third position in our lock. So it's not quite going to solve this one yet. Let's just double check what this is. So it's wider at the bottom and has a longer neck. So this will be our third position here about right and now we need to get our blue for the second position on that lock and you can see we'll stand it up right so we can get a better idea you can see it's got a smaller neck on it here a little shorter neck and then widens out and tapers off towards the bottom so let's just see if we can figure out what that one is here um, this looks to be about right and you can see 
nice and easy we get into this glove of need container and once you pick this glove up you're gonna need to inspect it and as soon as you do it is going to give us yet another chocolate bar here okay so now like i said we have our chocolate bar um, puzzle basically what you're trying to do is collect five of these so that we can separate the wrappers from the chocolate and ultimately we're going to be putting them into this toy summoner here so where you're going to get the other three chocolate bars it's pretty simple obviously for the first two we had to solve some puzzles but the last three you can see just in front of us here there is one in the lollipop trolley there so i'm just going to collect that for now we do have one that's in behind this desk um, so if you go in behind the front desk look under the candy box you can just throw that aside and there's actually a chocolate bar up underneath that um, and then we have our last one just under the cauldron section there is a drawer under the window here and we are going to get our last one so I'm just gonna pop that off so now all you need to do is actually examine each of the chocolate bars just give it a quick click that's going to separate the chocolate and the wrappers and again we need to actually deposit the wrappers only into that toy summoner so we're just going to go ahead we're going to do this five times zoom in inspect it and click it just to separate and you'll see at the bottom corner here we have five chocolate and five wrapper i'm going to go ahead and just throw these chocolates out and then we can deposit our five wrappers for the toy summoner here. So there's our one, two, three, four, and five. And it is going to give us a ghost map and we will use this for the next puzzle. So the next puzzle here is using the ghost map, but it is the Ulrich Shadow Step puzzle here. So you can see we've got a series of symbols here. It looks to be that there's five that we can actually change on the door. And really what we're gonna need to do is just using that clue from the previous puzzle, our ghost map here, when you open it up, we're actually trying to plot the route that Ulrich Shadow Step took when he was inside this magic shop here. So what I always like to do, especially for clues like this that are kind of interactive and gonna just kind of keep playing, just to make sure that we don't miss anything I like to throw a pin up so we can kind of see in our corner here, but you can see so he started at the cauldron Then he makes his way over to the unmovable pumpkin walks over here to our books Hits the candlestick here and then ends at the scrolls So we're gonna just quickly input that on the door here. So again, I said we have cauldron in our first position I skipped it there And then we have our unmovable pumpkin and then he hits the books and then the candle and then he ends on well he ends on the scroll so i need that as candle and just like that we are through to the next area this is going to unlock the upper area or the upper portion of this puzzle room so now for this wizard hats puzzle here to actually unlock this combination lock you can see that we've got to come up with a series of three numbers and we have colors and kind of symbols here as well um, really what you're going to need to do to unlock this combination is we have to kind of refer to this color symbol ticker here um, you can see that just by looking at the combination you would really read this as six different quadrants to get your numbers what we're going to need to do here is use the blue symbol and the green symbol and that is going to give us one number we'll use both green symbols here to give us our second number and then the both two of the red symbols now to get our um, third number here so what that's going to look like you can see that the blue symbol here almost looks like an l shape and our green is like a half circle if if you were to put them together um, obviously this again the law combination here is showing that the blue is on top and the um, half circle here is on the bottom so you could kind of visualize that as being a five so our first number here is going to be a five the blues on top that L shape and then we have the half circle there on the bottom our green shape so five now we have two greens so both the top and the bottom part here in this uh, middle section is the half circle so that could in theory look like a three so we'll go ahead and plug three in and now we're going to do the same thing with our red section we have another um, two red sections here basically two circles stacked on top of each other and obviously that is going to give us an eight here and that is going to go ahead and unlock our wizard hat cabinet here.
So now obviously with our wizard hats open, we can go ahead and we can collect the two that they have in the case here. Um, what we're going to need to actually do, because we do need the wizard hats to unlock our enchanted striders puzzle here, and you can see that there is the shapes kind of correspond on this combination here with our wizard hat so you can see that we've got a blue moon we've got um a little angular piece here with the emerald kind of square on it so you can see those are our two shapes here we're going to need a red one though and that red hat is actually just in behind us here so there's our red sun now you can see that obviously there is a blue hat with a star on it and we have the blue moon the lock here lets us know that we need to use the blue moon so we know that this wizard hat even though it looks pretty similar we do not actually need so i'm going to just toss it out here but what we need to do actually with this one is just we'll start with our first position here and you can see that it's almost got like stick figure um, postures here what it's actually going to do as soon as you put a wizard hat on this uh, little test dummy you can see that it's enacting a position here um, for our lock so with this one we have our arms out completely and a leg kicked up so let's just find that one on here for our first position that looks to be about right our arms are nice and straight we've got a leg kicked up here so we can basically i'm just going to collect that one for now you can see it resets our second position here was the blue hat with the moon this is almost like a jumping jack where everything is outstretched into an x so that should be pretty easy to find here just this one and our last one here is for the green hat and our arms are out and up as well with another leg kicked the biggest telltale here is just with the actual arms pointing up like obviously we have the arms outstretched here but they don't point up whereas this one does and there's our leg kick just by grabbing these self walking boots here we're going to be able to use them but what we actually should probably do first is this clue so the self walking boots are actually going to help us solve a puzzle that is up top here so obviously there's chocolate bars here. We don't need these as keys anymore. We've used them already. But these self-walking self boots are going to help us solve the chest lock. And you can see just by the kind of um, symbols and stuff that they have here, they have feet walking. What we're gonna need to do is actually count the steps between the different sun positions. And how you're gonna get that, you can see that we need to place our boots here, but we also need to grab the enchanted broom here. And this is going to help us clean up the potion spills so that we can get an idea of what the actual sun symbols look like that we're going to um, need to place into that chest. So we're going to get all that cleaned up there. Clean up the potion spills. We can toss that out now. And we're just going to make sure that we put our self-walking boots here or self-striding, whatever it is. Put it on this marker here and they're going to just start to walk. And how you solve that chest lock up there is just by counting the number of steps. It might be a little easier actually if we move this trolley out of the way just to be able to count properly. But we're going to need to count the number of steps in between each of these positions, but we also need to take note of these different um, sun logos as well. So let's just get our suns in place first, and it's pretty easy to tell once you kind of look top down here. So this was obviously our starting point. We just have to make a quick note to which this walks to first. So that is kind of the curved sun, and then it's going to hit almost like a tribal sun, and I like to call this one like the child sun, a nice simple one here. So here is our curved sun, here's the tribal sun, and the children's style sun here. So, so what we're going to want to do with this now, now that it's reset, one, two, three, four, five, six. So our first number is six, one, two, three, three, one, two, three, four, five. So it took us six steps to get to this first one. It took us three steps between those two, and then it took five steps from this to here. So we're just gonna go ahead, and now that we have our, our sun set up, we're gonna input six. We're gonna do th whoop, three, and we're gonna do five. So six, three, five with our suns, and that is going to unlock our first wand. Now that is going to ultimately be part of our pretty much final puzzle here so we have our first wand obviously from this chest we need our second one actually just from this flying book that's coming across us so we need to inspect it open it up and it is going to give us a wand as well so you want to click that to take that the flying book i'm going to just bring downstairs with me because the last two wands actually that we need for this puzzle are on the bottom floor here so what we're actually going to need to do is there is a wand buried away in this starving grimoire and what you need to do and if you pick it up and inspect it it'll basically show you that you need uh, to input some candies here so 
We're gonna just take the lid off here, grab a green one, and drop the green candy inside, just because it's the first color here on the Starving Grimoire. I'm gonna go ahead, we'll put a red in, because it is the next one. And once you put a couple in, sometimes I've had it unlock on one before too, but just kind of follow this pattern and it'll eventually just kind of eat its way open. You'll see now that we have almost like a portal style and the latch is unlocked. And that is going to give us another wand here. So we're done with this book. We can put that away. And our last book here is just the New Seekers Codex. And with this one, what you're going to need to do is you can see that the eye is kind of Googling around a little bit. Um, you're basically going to need to just follow its direction. And it will close up once you get to the right spot. So just like that there. We give it a quick click here. And it is going to give us our last wand. So we'll just take that. You can see here it basically pegs you right into the middle or right into the top corner of the room here right beside the glove of need and cauldrons. That is going to be enough to unlock the new Seeker's Codex and give us our four wands. So this puzzle now is basically setting us up for the end of the room. What we're going to need, since we have our four wands here, there's one more thing that we need to um, pick up here, and that is just the Book of Wands. Now basically what this says when you inspect it, there's three different things that we have to consider when evaluating and grading these wands. The first one being wood. Um, quality. So the white wood is going to be uh, cheaper, lower quality wood. There's a brown wood that's kind of in the middle and the purest quality or best quality is the dark brown or black. There are also going to be different effects when we shoot these wands. There's going to either be a star, a spark, or lightning. And then we also have another instrument here that's going to be able to let us know what the power of these wands are. So it's either going to be a one, two, or three strength. So as always with this clue, because we're kind of working in tandem with it, I always like to just kind of pin it so we have it for reference. But basically what we're looking to do here is just put these things through the ringer. So I'm going to start with the... I believe this is our white and green wand here. You can see there's like a little um, emerald on the bottom there. So we're going to start with that one. And once you shoot it at the um, little instrument here, you're going to see that it is only one power. So we know that it's one power. That's basically denoted here on the side here with like the little lightning things. I did not notice actually though. Okay, so you can see it's almost got like a fire animation to it. So we know then two that if it is sparks, it's going to be um, on the dragon quadrant of this, of this um, little platform here. Now we just need to assess the wood quality. So it's white wood, obviously we know it is going to be this bottom corner here. Here's our symbol for the white wood. We have it at our one strength and in the dragon for fire. So it's just going to be the bottom left of our um, top right quadrant here. So we can go ahead, we're going to do the same thing for all of these other wands. Let's get both of the white wands out of the way here. This one is basically pure white. It's got a little bit of blue on top, but for this purpose, I'm going to just call it the all white wand. So we already know basically that it is going to have a low wood quality, but we need to still assess the animation, which looks like it sparks and the strength. You can see it lights up the third circle. So it's going to be a quite powerful wand. So sparks, we have or sorry, lightning is the unicorn. We know that it reaches um, three power and it's the lowest quality wood. So that's gonna peg this one at the top left quadrant of our bottom grid here. So that's both the white wands out of the way. Just going in terms of quality again, wood quality again, we've got our all brown wand here. We can shoot this one and it is a star animation with two power. So this one we know it's stars here, so we're going to go on the phoenix side, which is our top left. It is middle quality and middle grade power, I believe. Just let me quickly double check. Yep, so middle grade power. So this one is going to be dead center of our top left grid here. Now we have our last quick wand to assess. It is the only black wand that we have, so it's already dark wood, which is the highest rarity here. Um, we need to assess its strength and the animation. So it lights up our third circle and it is lightning as well. So it is going to be going into our kind of unicorn section here at the bottom. 
It was three power and highest quality. So it is the top right of our bottom grid. And with that, we have now unlocked the Demystifying Lamp, which is ultimately going to help us with the final series of puzzles to get out of the room here. Here, So we have one final puzzle, really, and then there's a couple of other things that we need to quickly do before we get out of the room. But we're going to need to take this Demystifying Lamp, and you can see as soon as you pick it up, it's basically like a transferable bubble that allows you to kind of see some things that you wouldn't otherwise be able to see. So you, for this, you are going to need to make sure that you've at least got it placed. You're going to pretty much need to lug it around with you, though. But you can see that there is a little shadow case here that is blocking a puzzle. We're going to just go ahead and move that now. Now, as long as this lamp is, or as long as it's within our lamp um, area here. But basically what we need to do to solve this is you can see that there's almost some like moon symbols here. So you're just very similar to some of the other puzzles in this game. You're going to be just kind of tracing these wires back and trying to transfer those symbols to our lock. So I'm just following the first um, symbol here and we can already see actually that this is already our first um, symbol in the first position there. So this is our first wire. It's already set up as a crescent moon. So we can just take another wire back that we see here. Um, you can see, I don't exactly know which one this is. Let's see if there's any other wires here that we can get. Okay, so there's um, a full moon here and we can see that it just goes up and over the balcony. So let's go see what position that is for our full moon. Okay, so that should be this same wire here. Just follow this through and you can see that it's in our second position. So I'm gonna go ahead. Again, we have our crescent moon here already, so I'm just gonna look for the full moon and plug that in in our second position. Um, we can look for our third wire here. So we'll just use our lamp to follow this third wire down. Looks like that goes straight up and over the balcony as well. So there's only one that actually comes through the railing, but there is actually another one just on the other side of the railing here. And it looks to be a half moon. So we can go ahead and plug the half moon in this third position here. And we have our last position. So again, let's take our fourth wire here, sort that one out of the crowd there. And it just goes straight up here and here we have a an eclipse or like no moon basically so that's pretty easy just place that here put in our no moon and with that we unlock the wizard hat but what we're going to need to do is you have to make sure that it is within the radius of the lantern to be able to pick it up now that we have that with us, we can bring our lantern down and what we actually need to do is very similar to this test dummy here with the uh, real world um, wizard hats. You can see that we have almost like a, a shadow realm version of that same test dummy. What we're gonna need to do is put our wizard hat onto him here and he's got a wire there now that we can't do anything with, but it's pointing back upwards. So let's go back upstairs here. And you can see that he's got a bird cage with our key as well. So I'm just gonna drop the lantern so that we can go ahead and open this up. You can see that the, the key isn't a shadow item, so you don't actually need to bring the lamp with you for this last bit. But this is the key, obviously, that we need to escape the door. And just like that, you will have completed the first escape room in the series of four for Escape Simulator's newest paid DLC, um, the Magic DLC. So hopefully you guys enjoyed this video. If you did, make sure to give it a like um, and subscribe to Friendly Frenzy Games on YouTube for a bunch more gaming content. Specifically, we've got full walkthroughs for every escape room in Escape Simulator to date, minus the community rooms, but hopefully you'll be able to find some entertainment and some value in those as well. Hope to see you guys in the next episode. Have a great day, everybody.